Hey, this is Flo and in this video I'm going to show you how your app can actually donate information to Core Spotlight, making it available for search in Spotlight. So let me show you how this works. I have the Stocks app open here, which I um, developed in the Stocks app series and then built a widget for in the widget kit course. And um, this is basically the app, so you can add a stock symbol and then it is saved to Core Data. And for example in here I have added the AAPL, so Apple symbol. Now if I head out of the app, open Spotlight and okay, I already searched it before but let me search for AAPL again and then you can see the app gets suggested here, I can tap on it and it gets opened automatically. Now let's jump over to the code and I've actually already written the code and I will just go through it and explain you how it works. I think that's the easiest way. So first of all, I have an array of stock entities. This is all of the data from core data, so all of the different stock symbols. In this case, this array only contains one entry and that's AAPL. Now I'm mapping all of these entries to so-called CS searchable items, which are part of core spotlight. So you definitely need to import core spotlight first. So as I said, um, you need a, an array of searchable items and a searchable item needs a unique identifier. In this case, it's just, I just used the symbol, so AAPL or TSLA for Tesla or whatever else you want to use. And then a domain identifier. In this case, I just used my bundle ID and then dot stock entity because that's the name of the type that I'm uh, yeah, using here. And then you also need a set of attributes and I define this attribute set a few lines above and then pass it into the initializer for the CS searchable item. So the attribute set is internally a core spotlight searchable item attribute set, so a very long um, class name. It needs a content type, in this case it's just content. Let's have a look what else is available. Okay, so URL is also available, item and so on, a lot of different um, content types, but content makes sense here because we are referring to content of our stocks app. Then we need to set a title for the attribute set. So I just use the entities title, but it would also make sense to, so for example, um, give the name of the stock here. So instead of just AAPL, actually write Apple. This just depends on your data model. So I don't have Apple saved anywhere, so I have to use AAPL. And then for the related unique identifier, you can then use the symbol or something like a UUID or whatever that uniquely identifies this searchable item. Then, as I said, I just create a searchable item and return it. And since all of this happens inside of a map call, in the end, our searchable items variable will be an array of searchable items. Now to actually expose this to Spotlight, you can use the searchable index .default and then call the func function index searchable items, pass in your array that you want to donate to Spotlight, and then there is a closure which gives you an optional error, and you can just check if there was an error and then print out the error, or otherwise handle somehow that the um, searchable item got indexed successfully. Okay, so this code is all you need to do the functionality that in Spotlight you can search for content of your app and Spotlight will then suggest your app here. Let's tap on it once again and the app just gets opened. Alright, that's already it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.